Hello and welcome to video 36 in my series on the Fly Lady system. The Fly Lady system is a way to manage your home and your personal life. Um, you can find it at flylady.net. If you haven't seen my previous videos, you should definitely click on the playlist below and watch them in order and um, one a day and follow the baby steps. Those are the routines. Those baby steps become the routines that are the foundation for the whole system. Once you feel like you have your routines well established, and that may take months, if not longer, um, then you want to move on to the next steps. So those would be videos 33, 34, 35, and then from here on. <laughs> so um, we previously talked about cleaning within your routines, daily cleaning, like your swish and swipe, your kitchen sink, decluttering. Then we talked about the weekly home blessing hour, which is a once a week clean of basic areas of your house, kind of like if a cleaning service came in. Then we talked about the basic weekly plan and menu, menu planning and making a grocery list. Now I want to talk about zone cleaning. So I was thinking about doing this all in one video. I think I'm going to break it up. Well, no, I don't know. I, we'll, we'll find out as I go along. But zone cleaning is a deep clean of a very specific area of your home. So the way that this, the beauty of this system is that you do some maintenance and you do some work every day so that you don't ever have to do a ton of work all at once. So we do our routines, we do the weekly home blessing hour, we do zone cleaning so that we never find ourselves having to do like spring cleaning or you never have to spend like seven hours on a Saturday cleaning your entire house. It's just always clean. Um, and if it's you know starting to seem like it needs to be cleaned, that will be happening soon because it's built into the system. So zone cleaning works um, like this. You basically break your house up into pieces or zones and those zones are assigned a number. That number becomes whatever um, week of the month it is. So let me try to explain that a little more clearly. Um, so I'm gonna need my control journal and a calendar to be able to explain this. So Fly Lady breaks her zones up in a certain way and you can start with hers. Um, you know, that's totally up to you. I didn't ever start with hers. I just kind of took it and made it into my own. Um, <laughs> excuse me, I'm so sorry about that. I just kind of took it and made it into my own because um, my house was not the same as her house. So I'm just going to briefly tell you about Fly Lady's zones and then um, I'll show you my zones. So Fly Lady's zones are pretty basic actually. Let me bring back the whiteboard. Fly Lady's zones are this. She has zone one which is her entrance front porch and dining room zone two is her kitchen zone three is her main bathroom and another room. Zone four is the master bedroom, bathroom, and closet. My camera angle was, let's see, that might be a little better. And zone five is the living room. So you may or may not have these areas in your house. Um, 
you might have more than this. So basically, zone one is, um, you know, where you do a deep clean of your entryway, your front porch, and your dining room if you're following her plan. Zone two is where you do the deep clean of your kitchen. So like every day, you're cleaning your sink, you're shining your sink. Once a week, you're doing a quick mop and vacuum of your kitchen and quick dust, right? But on zone two day, or zone two week rather, you are doing a very deep clean of your kitchen, and I'll talk more about that. Zone three, you'd be doing the main bathroom in another room. So let's say that you have, um, you know, you have kids. So another room would be their room. Or you have um, a guest room or an office or something like that. Zone four, master bedroom, bathroom, and closet. And zone five is the living room. So I didn't have these zones in my house. So I didn't follow this, but I understood the basic premise, which is you break your house up into manageable pieces and you clean, deep clean them once a week. Or, I'm sorry, you deep clean them each week. The other thing about zone cleaning is she has you do um, 15 minutes a day. And you do one zone per week. So what that means is you are not ever going to spend like a huge amount of time doing zone cleaning. If you took 15 minutes every day and you spent 15 minutes and you really did, you know, put the timer on, you focused and you worked really hard for 15 minutes in your living room. Well, if you work 15 minutes every day, let's even say you just work you know, five days a week and you take the weekends off. Well, you've got like an hour and 15 minutes of cleaning, right? And if you do work every day, you got an hour and 45 minutes. You may not think that you can clean that one zone in that time, but you'd be surprised. If you've been decluttering 15 minutes a day, you've been doing your hot spots, you've been doing your room rescue as part of your routine, you're gonna find that eventually you probably can do this because it's not, um, when you, when you have the clutter out of the way, it's so much easier. You don't have to clean the clutter and move it around. Um, you'll also find, I, well, I found that the first couple of times that you clean your zone are the hardest because you're doing a deep clean for the first time there. But once you've done that and you are in the habit of deep cleaning once a month there, it goes so much faster because it really doesn't get that dirty in one month. So I love zone cleaning. I will never clean my house another way. <laughs> my, since I've been pregnant, um, my mom has helped me and I've had some like, like um, restrictions and things on what I can do. And I can't speak enough to this system into having a control journal, into doing zone cleaning and routines, I can't speak to it enough because my mom will come over, she, I, I get done the things that I can do, but when she comes over, she knows, she always calls this her little, her little chore book. <laughs> and she's like, where's my little chore book? She'll grab this, I have checked off what I've already done, and she can just take the list and she'll finish what I haven't done. And it ensures that my house gets clean the way I want it to be cleaned. And maybe I'll clean things that she wouldn't think about. Um, and it works out really well. So before I show you my detailed lists, I just want to talk about how this works with a calendar. So you break your house up into five zones, whatever those zones might be. When I was um, coming up with my own zones, I tried to balance it. Like I tried to think what would be an equal amount of cleaning each week. So that was kind of the way that I did it. Um, yeah. What is an equal amount of cleaning each week? And I wanted to ensure that I got every single part of my house. So the house that I lived in before we moved had one set of zone cleaning lists. When we moved here, I had to go through and make a new set because the house is way bigger and has way more rooms and it's just different. So you have five zones. No matter what size your house is, 
how many rooms do you have? You have five zones. And the reason why you have five zones is because those correspond with the weeks in a month. So let's look at March, for example. So, sorry that this is blurry. I think it's because it's so tiny. But I think you can still see the calendar as it's laid out. You see that there are five weeks. One, two, let me get a pen. One, two, three, four, five weeks in March. Well, that is, that is bothersome. Let me turn to, I just have these filled out, but, and I thought it would be easier to see on a smaller scale. Oh, I know, bear with me. This will be a perfect one. This one's just too big. Too much okay this will be perfect so here we go perfect okay so when we look at a month this is March we can see March 1st was on a Thursday so this is the first week of March then we have the second, the third, the fourth, and the fifth week of March. So she has five zones because you're gonna break up your zone cleaning into five weeks. So zone one is gonna happen the first week of the month, no matter how many days are in the first week of the month. So there are only three, well, technically four if you count Sunday. But th so there are four days in the first week of the month. You want to get zone one cleaned in those four days. Then you have all the next week to do zone two, zone three, zone four, and zone five. The only two zones that ever get shortchanged on time are going to be the zone one and zone five because sometimes they're sharing weeks. So when you make those zones, you want to try to make, well, this was my strategy. I would make them a little bit lighter of cleaning just because I might only have two days in zone one or one day in zone one um, or, you know, one day in zone five. But you do what you can in the 15 minutes that you've got. Zones two, three, and four are always going to be your full weeks. So you want to kind of load those knowing that you're going to have every day of the week to do that. So let's look at the next month. So here's April. Here's an example of where they've got like one day on Sunday, but Fly Lady doesn't do cleaning really on Sunday. So I would just move on. This would be zone one, zone two, zone three, zone four, and zone five. So the previous month you had two days to get your zone cleaning done in zone one. This month you have a whole week. So whatever you didn't get done here in this week, you just do it here because you're gonna have time to make it up. You have a list, a checklist in your control journal, so you don't have to try to remember what you cleaned. You just check it off. And as long as everything gets checked off, you know, every couple months, you're good to go. So for example, in this month, you had the whole week to do zone five, and here you just have one day to do zone five. So zone five got a really good cleaning here, and it's gonna get as much as you can get done here, and then you move on with life. So let's turn the page. So in this month, now zone one gets more days, right? Zone two, zone three, zone four, zone five. Zone one, two, three, four, five. So I've already, I'm looking all the way to July and the zone cleaning is always gonna work out that way. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if you follow Fly Lady's email, she'll email you and tell you what zone you should be in. So we always have five zones because we have five weeks that we're gonna work through in a month. Zone one and zone five are not always gonna be full weeks. You do as much as you can and you move on. So try to, when you're creating your zones, think of what would be an equal amount of cleaning and then make one and five just a little bit lighter. 
That's essentially what zone cleaning is. The breaking apart of your house into pieces or zones and then dedicating one week a month to cleaning them. So your entire house will be deep cleaned every single month. Just not all at once, <laughs> 15 minutes at a time. So understanding that, I think kind of takes out the, it makes cleaning your house less daunting. And if it's getting decluttered every single day and um, you know, you're know you're working through your routines, your house is gonna be cleaner than it's ever been. And the more you do it, the easier it gets because now it's not about getting out the initial dirt and grime and dust, it's just about maintaining the cleanliness. So the first time you do a zone cleaning of your master bathroom might be disgusting. The second time will be better. The third time will be better. The fourth time will be even better. So that it's not dirty because every single month it's getting cleaned, a deep clean. I hope that that makes sense, the way that it's organized, because it seems confusing at first. But really, once you understand that you're just assigning different parts of your house to different weeks of the month, and then spending 15 minutes a day cleaning them, I think it makes it a whole lot easier. So let me show you my zone cleaning lists. So I use an ARC notebook system because it just and I put them in page protectors and I, I typed it up on the computer. This was my method and this is what I liked because what I can do is just go pull them out, take the list with me and go to that area and just start checking things off. I just did this in Google Docs. It was free and I just typed it up. What I did was when I first moved to this house, I knew I needed to make my zone cleaning lists. So I got a clipboard and a piece of paper and a pen. I went to each room of my house and I just started listing all the things that needed to be cleaned. Now, I can look around and if I was going into that room, I would know what needed to be cleaned. I don't necessarily have to write it down for myself, but I was writing it down in case I ever needed somebody else to come in and clean my house. The list would be there and it would be in enough detail that I knew my house would get cleaned the way that I wanted it to be cleaned. When we moved to this house, I was pregnant and I was already kind of having some issues. And so my mom was coming to help me and this just made it so much easier. Um, the other thing is, if you make a nice detailed checklist like this, then let's say I don't finish all of zone one, one week because I only had one day in that zone. Well, I can keep this checklist and I keep what I got done checked off so that the next month rolls around and I see what I didn't get done. I don't have to try to remember and I know that that stuff is going to get done that month. Some people I've seen on the internet, they'll like write out their zone cleaning list in a bullet journal or in a planner. I wouldn't want to rewrite this every month, but I've also seen that most people don't have as detailed of zone cleaning as I do. Even the fly lady doesn't but I'm a detail-oriented person, right? So for some people, this is overkill. But I like this level of detail, and like I said, I know that my house is gonna get cleaned exactly how I want it, and things aren't gonna be forgotten because it's on a list. So let me just show you what I have done. So for me, zone one is my front porch my entryway, my back porch, the little entryway from my garage. There's a little storage area under the stairs in the dining room. So this might seem like a lot, but it's really not. And that's why I put it all together into zone one. And realistically, when my mom comes to help, if we're doing this at the same time, we usually can get the entire zone done in like an hour. Granted, I have help, right? But even before, when I was able to do most of it myself, I was still able to get it done usually in like an hour and a half. So if you did break it up into 15 minutes a day, you can get it done, right? If, there's, if the room is full of clutter and all of that, one thing that Fly Lady suggests is instead of doing your zone cleaning 15 minutes a day, spend 15 minutes 
additionally, spend 15 additional minutes decluttering that zone. So let's say that I'm doing my, um, I'm doing my routines and I'm already doing 15 minutes of decluttering a day. I'm doing my hot spot, I'm doing my room rescue. One of the other things Fly Lady says is to do 15 minutes of zone cleaning each day. But if my zone is so cluttered that I can't clean, then instead of doing the zone cleaning, I'm going to do 15 minutes of decluttering in that zone every single day because once I get the clutter out, then I can start doing the zone cleaning, the deep cleaning. So you don't move on to this until the room has been decluttered or the areas have been decluttered. That is your number one priority because you can't clean it and you can't organize it. Clutter, I mean. <laughs> so zone one has all these areas. So then most people are not going to do this, but I am, you know, overkill, right? <laughs> So I broke it up, front porch and garage entry. And then I just started listing very specifically what I wanted done. So in the front porch, sweep down the cobwebs, wipe off the door, sanitize the door handle, wipe off the light fixtures, sweep the porch and mat. Once that's done and I check all that off, you know, I, I have a very detailed list, right? My mom, one of the things she never thought about was like sanitizing door handles. Well, I like that done. Since it's on my list, if I can't do it, which I do sanitize door handles, but if I couldn't do it, she would do it, right? For the garage entry, clean the cobwebs, dust the door, sanitize the doorknob, sanitize the light switches, vacuum the, the mat. So you can see that I've got, and it's super specific, right? Under the stairs, dust the door, sanitize the doorknob, straighten and organize the shelves, vacuum under the stairs. Um, for the entrance, clean the cobwebs, and most of it is re repetitive, right, because you're going to do the same things, but I want to have a checklist to remind myself so I don't have to remember from month to month, and so that I don't have to explain it to anybody. So clean the cobwebs, sanitize the light switch, wipe off the door, sanitize the door handle, dust the baseboards, vacuum and mop. So it's very specific. You don't have to be this specific. This is just what I liked. Um, then I have zone two. So I broke zone two up like this. My kitchen, my pantry, and my laundry room. And so, like, even for my kitchen, I'm not going to go through everything because a lot of it's similar, right? But um, clean the cobwebs, dust and clean the cabinets and handles, clean the sides of my kitchen island, sanitize light switches, clean the outside of the refrigerator, clean the microwave outside and inside, clean the fan or the vent and the vent, clean the backsplash tile, clean the light switches, clean out Oh, I have light switches on there twice. <laughs> clean out the refrigerator thoroughly. Straighten organized cupboards and drawers. Clean the stove. Clean the counters and sink. Clean under the sink. Dust the baseboards. Vacuum the rugs and floor and mop. Um, even in my, like, like my laundry room, dust the fire extinguisher. Dust the dog food bin. Shake out the dog beds. Wipe down the washer and dryer. Um, so I have it super specific because I like all of that done. You don't have to be this detailed. I, I have to try to emphasize that. But you can be as detailed as you want. And so like when I went into the room with the clipboard, I really just did, just, I really did look thoroughly around and go, what would everything be that I would need to clean? And I just wrote it down and I typed it up. So if I ever find mistakes, like I have here, or I repeated something, or if I ever find um, um any kind of issues or things change, it's very easy for me to just go into my Google Docs, change the document, reprint it. So like in our living room, we, we moved some, we, we added some things. My dad made us um, a coffee table and some end tables and I bought a couple of lamps. And we changed a couple of things upstairs as well. So once, when I change things, I just update this really quick print out a new one, slide it in the, the sleeve. So my zone three is the upstairs bathroom, the linen closet and stairs, the spare room, and LBK's room. So LBK is what we're calling our baby because we don't have a good name for him right now. <laughs> um, and LBK is just stands for what we're calling him. <laughs> um, so I have a detailed list of every single thing that I like done in those areas. So for example, in the upstairs bathroom, um, along with all of the usual stuff, sanitizing,
cleaning the sink, the counter, the tub, the towel holder, the toilet paper holder, wiping off the crock where I have my um, toilet brush, and even like dusting and organizing the cabinet. So I'll, if it's deep clean, right, I'll open up the cabinet, dust it out, organize, make sure everything in there looks good. And once you've done this a couple times, I mean, it's almost automatic, right? Because you've got the clutter out, it's organized, it's very easy to clean out. Zone four, master bedroom, bathroom, and closet. So I have all of those details there. And so one of the things I like to do in all of my zones is if I have shelving or drawers, I always add organize it and dust it out. So like for the closet, organize the hanging clothes, the shelves, and the shoes. Because if I do that every month, there's very little that I actually have to do because I do a pretty good job of maintaining it on a daily and weekly basis. And my last zone is the living room. We have a small office. It's kind of like a little alcove off of the living room. So that's what I'm calling my small office. Coat closet and downstairs bathroom. So I have my list of stuff for that. And that is my zone cleaning. So keys for zone cleaning. If I had to like break it down into the necessary information. Let me just kind of erase this and break it down. Oops, and let me just bump the camera while I'm at it. That, that will be helpful too. Okay, so keys to zone cleaning. One zone per week. 15 minutes per day. And if you're not to the point where you can clean, you're spending 15 minutes decluttering that zone. Um, break house into five zones. You want five zones for those five weeks each month, right? Break your house into five zones and Make um, make a cleaning checklist for each zone. So, to get yourself started, you can of course just go to flylady.net and you can use hers. She has it all detailed out. She has... Um, an example of a detailed clean list is absolutely not as detailed as mine, but you know, not everybody's going to be that detailed. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> um, so what you want to do is either follow hers or if you are ready to do this on your own, all you want to do is just go around your house with a clipboard, make a cleaning checklist for each zone. Think about how you can break up your house into zones. What are how can you group the areas so that the cleaning load is, is equitable throughout the house? Give it a number. It does not have to match fly ladies. Zones 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You're going to do one zone per week, 15 minutes per day, and that's it. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was, and I've actually just started doing this recently, thinking about the calendar. I've actually kind of just stopped worrying about sharing zones one and five in the same week. And I basically just every Monday start a new zone. So I'm not actually on schedule with the fly lady anymore because the way that I do it is when Monday rolls around, I'm on zone one. Then the next Monday is zone two. Then the next Monday is zone three. Next one is zone four. The next one is zone five. So I've been now doing a house cleaning, zone cleaning routine where I do my entire house in five weeks. It doesn't really, to me, make a huge difference because the house is getting cleaned basically once a month. So, and then I don't feel like I didn't get all of my tasks done for the zone. Maybe if I only had one day in zone one, I don't really have to worry about that at that point. I give myself a whole week for every zone at this point and it's working out really well. My mom was traveling um, this past week, and so my dad came over to help me with zone cleaning. Um, 
and it was really funny because he was at first really just kind of like I think he just thought I was crazy because I busted out the zone cleaning list but then when he was helping me I just had it on the table and we could check off things as we finished them so he'd say well what's next and I say well check the list <laughs> it's right there so he would check the list and as we finish things mark them off so if you have people helping you clean the house or clean the zones it's really nice because you can just leave that list out and people can just check things off as they finish them things don't get you know done twice and things don't get missed so that's one real advantage of having a nice detailed checklist is that you know multiple people can use the list and um, it makes it really easy to know what you need to do if you don't feel good or if you're going to be out of town or you know you have to work a different shift and your spouse or your kids are going to help you you know you can just leave that list out and let them check it off as they do it um, you could do that with your kids I can definitely see like older kids teenagers you could have 15 minutes of zone cleaning be their you know part of their their family contribution every day and if you give them an allowance or you know whatever I don't like to say chores but you know kids need to learn that they have to contribute to the household um, and it helps them to know what to do when they're older right I mean you're you're teaching them how to maintain their household which is a huge gift so you could just leave that list out on the fridge and you know have your kids have them in routines as well and maybe one of their routines after school is they come home and they do 15 minutes of zone cleaning and you know one thing fly lady says is housework done incorrectly still blesses your family so even if your kids don't clean it or your spouse doesn't clean it the way you want them to clean it it's still better than if they hadn't done it at all and just because you like it done a certain way doesn't mean that's the only way to do it so you know where I'm I'm sure now if you've been watching this series you see how controlling I am <laughs> uh, where I'm very controlling about things and I like things done my way in sharing this zone cleaning um, with my mom I have learned that I just let go and you know sh if it says you know clean the the cupboards I don't care what she does if she's cleaning the cupboards it's better than if nothing was getting done at all and she doesn't need me to tell her what to do she is smart enough to figure it out and she has been cleaning a lot longer than I have you know with kids I would maybe show them how you like it done and then let it go if they're doing it don't nag them because then they're never going to do it again you know be appreciative for their contribution and I think they will be appreciative of you teaching them this method so that when they're adults and have a household to maintain they never have to feel the overwhelming dread of like Saturday cleaning <laughs> this is the worst so I think this video has gone on long enough but I knew that this was probably going to be the longest video that I made because zone cleaning is I think probably the most extensive and detailed part of the system to explain but once you understand it and once you start doing it this is really where your house is pretty much always clean when you put all these pieces together your routines your weekly home blessing and your zones you put all this together your house is pretty much always clean in fact my dad when I showed him this stuff he's like well your house just never has a chance to get dirty does it and I thought no it doesn't I mean it really doesn't and I have three dogs and it's it's surprisingly clean for a household with you know two people soon to be three and three dogs um, it's not it to me it's never perfect but it is always really nice never perfect because you're always in flux right the house is always being used but it's always being maintained the only time I can ever think of a perfect house is that time after you've been cleaning for seven or eight hours on a Saturday where you finally collapse on the couch and for like the next 10 minutes your house looks perfect but then once people start moving around and everybody starts you know living in the house again it's done it's not perfect anymore 
So with this system, everything looks really good all the time. Nothing is ever perfect, but I guarantee you, anybody could come in my house and I believe that they would say, I know they would say that I have a clean house. And that's important to me. Cleanliness makes me feel comfortable in my house so that I have some peace in my life. Then I don't have to stress about it because before I started doing this, I would dread the cleaning and I wouldn't want to do it. And so I just wouldn't do it. Or, you know, the day that I would do it, I would be resentful. I would be in a bad mood and I would just like, <sighs> it would make the day bad for everyone. Um, and nobody wanted to help me because it sucks cleaning all day long. And, you know, it just, Fly Lady wants you to avoid all of that stress all of that dra drama and trauma um, and just doing 15 minutes a day it will get done and the more you do it the better it's gonna be the easier it's gonna be so if the first few times you start cleaning your zone and it's hard and you don't you aren't seeing the progress that you want to see keep doing it because it will get better just like with the baby steps when you first did your first 15 minutes of decluttering or your you did your 10th 15 minutes of decluttering your house wasn't decluttered but if you do that every single day for three or four months your house will get decluttered 15 minutes at a time fly lady says your house didn't get dirty in one day it's not going to get clean in one day your zone didn't get dirty in one day it's probably not going to get thoroughly cleaned in one week of zone cleaning give it a few weeks you know do it two or three times and then you will see a huge difference and then when you start cleaning each time afterwards that's where the payoff is because it just becomes so much easier so <laughs> I think I was going to cut it off earlier but I talked for another few minutes I just really want to make clear how to do this and why we do this or why I do this and why I think other people should do this because it's it just will change your life in a good way so if you have any questions at all or comments please leave them below I hope that this was helpful to you um, sometimes it's hard to break down all of fly ladies information and so I hope that I was able to do this in a way that is understandable but again questions just leave them below if you haven't finished decluttering that is your priority spend the 15 minutes a day decluttering in the zone then move on to the cleaning so you may not even start this for months after you've been doing your routines you might be doing your routines for five six seven months before you bring in zone cleaning and that is totally fine because as long as you're doing your routines your house is already cleaner than it was because you're decluttering and you're doing basic cleaning so don't feel the need to rush into this. When I did Fly Lady, I think I did routines and weekly home blessing hour for like probably, I can't even remember, it seems like I did that for just like a year before I even introduced my, my zone cleaning into my system. And I thought my house was pretty darn clean just doing those things every day and every week. So this is for when you're ready. Do not feel rushed, do not feel pressured, you probably shouldn't start doing this after only doing 31 days of baby steps. This is just the next piece in the system. You should probably do your baby steps for a while, a few months, then incorporate the weekly home blessing hour. Do that for a few months, then incorporate the zone cleaning. Progress, not perfection. Don't try to get everything done all at once because you'll crash and burn. And that is something she wants you to avoid. She wants you to feel progress, feel accomplishment, not crash and burn. So now I'm really cutting it off here. Questions or comments, please leave them below. I hope this was helpful. And I will see you in the next video. There's not many more to go. Thanks. Bye-bye.